Sure thing, here's a revised version, hey there. If you're a fan of old Hollywood movies, you've got to watch Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. It's a real gem from 1969, filled with action, humor, and drama. The movie stars some big names from back then and is a roller coaster ride from start to finish. You'll find yourself laughing, gasping, and maybe even shedding a tear as you follow the adventures of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. There are plenty of funny moments, surprising twists, and touching scenes that'll keep you hooked. Now, here's a question for you. Which classic Hollywood actor in this movie was your favorite? Was it Paul Newman's cool portrayal of Butch or Robert Redford's charming Sundance Kid? And what about the qualities that make this movie stand the test of time? Is it the friendship between Butch and Sundance, the thrilling action scenes, or maybe the memorable soundtrack? We'd love to hear your favorite memory or personal experience related to this film. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more interesting facts about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid in 1969, a movie titled Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid Hit the Screens. It follows the adventures of two outlaws in the late 1800s American West. The story revolves around the charismatic leader, Butch, and his loyal partner, Sundance. Together with their gang, they rob banks and trains, dodging law enforcement. Butch, played by Paul Newman, is known for his cleverness, while Sundance, portrayed by Robert Redford, is recognized for his sharpshooting skills. The movie captures their camaraderie, daring heists, and their efforts to escape a relentless lawman. The movie was a hit, winning Oscars for Best Original Screenplay and Best Cinematography. Its memorable moments, like the bicycle scene and the final showdown, have left a lasting mark on cinema. Paul Newman, known for his cleverness, jokingly teased his co-star Robert Redford while they were making this famous movie. Newman jokingly suggested renaming the film Waiting for Lefty, comparing it to a play from the 1930s where characters wait for someone who never shows up. Lily Finney Zanuck, in a survey by a FI, shared that this movie was her favorite among all the films she's seen. Hearing personal favorites from people in the industry gives us an idea of how much the movie resonated with them. In another situation, Michelle Pfeiffer wanted Paul Newman for a part in the movie, A Thousand Acres, where she was the producer. She imagined Newman playing her character's father, Larry Cook. However, Newman said no to the role, and Jason Robards ended up playing it. This shows how casting decisions can change the direction of a movie. These stories give us a peek into what happened behind the scenes of the film, helping us understand how it was made and the people involved. Each detail adds to our understanding of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, making it more than just a movie, but a part of the history of cinema. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was a big hit when it came out. People loved its mix of action, humor, and great acting. George Stevens was asked to direct it, but he said no, so someone else did it instead. In 2005, a famous magazine ranked Paul Newman as one of the best movie stars ever, putting him at number 17. Newman and his friend both had sons named Scott who died young, which was sad for them. These facts show how the people involved in the movie were connected in interesting ways. The movie was made really well, and the actors did a great job, which is why it's still loved by people all over the world today. In the 1969 movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, actress Cloris Leachman portrayed a character named Agnes. She achieved the rare feat of winning both the Best Supporting Actress Oscar and the outstanding guest actress in a comedy series Emmy, joining a small group of actresses who have accomplished this, including Eileen Heckhart and Melissa Leo. The script for the film was initially titled The Sundance Kid and Butch Cassidy. Richard D. Zanuck of 20th Century Fox acquired it for $400,000 double the amount authorized by the studio's board of directors, as stated in the Blu-ray's supplemental material. The real Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid spent some time in the Patagonia region of Argentina before heading to Bolivia. During their stay, they visited the town of Calilla. Following a bank robbery and their escape from Argentina, they briefly stayed in Chile, where they became acquainted with minor Percy Sabert. Percy Sabert served as the inspiration for the character Percy Garris in the movie. Cloris Leachman's accomplishments, the script's acquisition, and the real-life inspiration behind one of the film's characters all add layers of interest to the 1969 movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, released in 1969, stars two lifelong friends who made their acting debuts in War Hunt. 
Robert Redford, before his acting career, was a swimming instructor and gained recognition in Hollywood for teaching the children of film stars how to swim. He also served as an uncredited technical advisor on films featuring Esther Williams. Redford shared a house with Sandra Ego, which is now her property. These experiences paved the way for his success in the film industry. During the making of the film, Lula Parker Betenson, sister of the real Butch Cassidy, frequented the set, sharing anecdotes about her brother. Her presence was appreciated by the cast and crew. She found the portrayal of her brother by Paul Newman remarkably accurate. The studio wanted her endorsement for the film, but hesitated to show it to her beforehand. Eventually, at Robert Redford's suggestion, she agreed to endorse it for a fee. He had two daughters with his wife, Barbara Susanna Mars and Rebecca. Additionally, he had six grandchildren. The births of Newman and Woodward's daughters were noted in Time magazine. They named their daughters after various inspirations, including characters from Woodward's films and novels they had read. Their eldest grandson, Peter, was mentioned in People magazine. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid had several interesting anecdotes surrounding its production. Robert Redford, who starred in the film, was initially attached to a different movie called The Verdict in 1982. However, he dropped out before production because he didn't like the character. This decision left director Sidney Lumet disappointed. The role Redford vacated was later taken over by his friend Paul Newman, who received an Oscar nomination for his performance. Elvis Presley's manager turned down two roles in Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid, both of which eventually went to Redford. These roles were originally offered to Presley for Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in 1958 and Sweet Bird of Youth in 1962. In addition to his movie career, Redford made appearances on primetime television. On December 24, 1962, he guest starred in three TV series Cousin Eunice, A Night of Horns and Bells, and Anything for a Laugh. These anecdotes shed light on some interesting aspects of the actor's career and the casting decisions in the movie Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid. The director of a 1969 movie alongside notable achievements directed his wife in a 1968 film, earning her a Best Actress Oscar nomination. In this regard, he joins a select group of directors who guided their spouses to similar nominations. Notably, he co-starred with Paul Newman in multiple films, including one from 1954, another from 1966, one in 1967, the aforementioned movie, one from 1972, and another from 1977. Throughout his career, he appeared in six films nominated for the Best Picture Oscar. Of these, only one secured a victory in the category. Furthermore, he received Best Actor nominations for his roles in some of these films. In summary, the actor and director, who played a pivotal role in a certain movie, had a distinguished career marked by collaborations with Paul Newman and recognition in acclaimed films, both as an actor and director.